Hello, hello, greetings and welcome to the debate. What are we talking about? We're talking about the J-League, kicked off back in 1993, boasting fantastic Japanese and non-Japanese players with a brilliant future. However, there is still a lot of improvements that could be made. And that's what we will be talking about today. First of all, let me introduce the co-host today, Victoria. How are you doing? Hi, how are you? I'm uh, really excited to be here. Excellent. <laughs> and you're a J-League fan then, is that right? Yes, I would. I would say so. Uh huh. <laughs> Definitely. Are you a Are you a fan, or you go to the stadiums a lot, or what's the deal then? Um, well, actually, when I I'm, com I'm coming from America, so mm. when I got here, um, I really had to get thrust into this world of Japanese football. Okay. So my friend, she um, she got me tickets to Kawasaki Frontal, and okay. I really I, that was the first time I saw Japanese football, uh -huh. and it was right before the World Cup, so. I saw how incredible Japanese football really was mm. and then I was just thrust into this world of fandom and the amazing fans and the amazing players and I just got obsessed from there. Excellent, so we'll be talking um, a lot about that uh, in depth. Uh, but not only you, uh, we have a representative of the J-League here today and we also have a wonderful array of expertise. Yeah, so we'll be asking about them, about the J-League, with its improvements that need to be yeah. made and um, it's amazing this also, but the things that need to be done too. Okay, let's kick it off then. Okay. Please have a seat. Lovely. So today we have a representative of the J-League, Hirosa-san. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank How are you? you. Um, are you prepared for this? Um, maybe a little, but I am, but I'm excited. You're excited? Yes, to be here I today. mean, everybody's going to be fairly honest with you, yeah? Mm -hmm. yes. so, but, but you're going to be um, answering to... honestly, yeah? Yes. Excellent, excellent. Brilliant. Um, and now uh, let us introduce um, the wonderful J-League lovers that we have today. Uh, Victoria, would you like to do the honors? Yes, uh, first of all we have Stephen. Would you like to say a few words about yourself? Yeah, my name is Steve Moore. I'm the Asia editor for a company called Sports News Television. It's, I'm based in Singapore and it is, SNTV is the largest sports video agency in the world. Mm -hmm. We're a joint venture between the Associated Press and IMG and basically we supply clips, highlights, interviews into newsrooms globally. Mm. Oh, wonderful. Okay, so if you're based in Singapore, I mean, there's, you're going to probably be giving us some words about how the J-League is covered in Singapore too, later on, right? Oh, definitely. I could talk yeah. about the international outreach, uh -huh. uh, some of our efforts we've been doing with the J-League as well, and just the feedback I get from clients because mm. I talk to broadcasters right, right, generally right. every day. Time. Thank you very much for coming. Steve. Cheers. Next we have uh, Stuart. Yep, nice to meet you. Um, yeah, so I'm Stuart. Um, I've lived in Japan over 30 years. Right. But I've been watching J League seriously for uh, six years. Mm. Um, fan of Yokohama F Marinos. Yeah, I didn't quite realize that, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I always dress like this. Yeah, but, yeah, but congratulations. I mean, a fantastic yeah, season, right? Yeah, so I, I got interested in uh, uh, watching soccer in Japan. Mm. Um, when my son got interested, he was about 10 years old. Right. So I said, let's support the local team and uh, I went to many matches the first year and uh -huh. then the second year I went to all home all away matches around mm. Japan right so, and I've been a regular since then excellent so you really know the ins and outs of the stadiums and, the, and stadiums. the atmosphere yeah. the relationship between the players and that you know the atmosphere just you know, eclectic yeah. it's amazing isn't it so yeah. we'll be talking I'll, about that later some yeah time. I was hooked from the first day First day. Yeah. Oh, just like yourself. Yeah. yeah. Just like you. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. And then we have a Sean. What's your story? Um, my story is shorter than these two guys. Um, I'm a freelance writer. I've been here for ten years yeah. and write about the J League. Occasionally mm. come on shows like this and talk about the J League. Uh -huh. And I'm really looking forward to, to hearing what people's opinions are mm. and seeing if we have any that, that vary. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much. Cheers. No and problem. Uh, another fellow American. Uh, yes, so my name is Dan Orlowitz. I'm uh, the head soccer writer at the Japan Times. Mm -hmm. uh, I've lived in Japan for just about 13 years, and uh, yes, this was my 12th or 13th season following the J League, and I've started blogging and then moved on to writing about 
the J League and Asian soccer and the national team, and uh, that's what I've been doing for about eight or nine years now. Mm. Excellent. So we'll be asking a lot about your expertise about you know the J League too, but also maybe possibly the national side and with what it's been experiencing over you know um, the last how many years has it been? 17 years since the World Cup was actually held over here. So thank you very much for coming today. Cheers. Thank Absolutely. You. Thank you. Cheers. Right then, uh, so gentlemen um, and everyone who's a uh, kindly watching this program, as you realize, there's, a, there's a lots of drinks on the table. Um, should, we, should we start this off in the Japanese style, uh, style of the Kanpai then? Oh, yeah. Excellent. <laughs> kanpai, cheers. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Kanpai, Kanpai, Kanpai. Cheers. Kanpai, Kanpai. Let's try not to spill cheers. anything. Yeah, okay. Excellent. Thank you, thank you. <clears throat> All right, let's go then, Victoria. Who should we start off with? Let's start off with uh, Sean. What do you got on your mind? Mm. Okay. Uh, my one is quite long, I'm afraid. I've snuck two into it. Um, okay. Mine is this that we don't really discuss mistakes that players make here. And also I sometimes feel that in press conferences, especially to coaches, the questions aren't quite harsh enough. Sometimes we need to dig a little bit deeper. Mm. So what does everybody think? Right. So should we get everyone to uh, okay, do the honest uh, then? Yeah, I want you guys to pick agree or disagree. On ah. What, we, what do you think about this? We have some cards. There we go. Agree, <laughs> okay. agree, agree, agree. A resounding agree. Well, that's boring. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Next topic. Well, one second, one second. One second. Um, Hiroshi-san, you don't have a card? Yes. Um, you, you, you don't have a card. But being a representative yes. of the JLE, okay. Um, so uh, everybody agrees on this um, situation then? I also agree. Right, you agree on this situation mm, so too. Um, would you like to kind of uh, explore a bit more? Um, um, well, I just think that um, obviously the, the league wants to to purvey a positive message. They want mm. the, the league to keep improving. So in that case, you don't want to focus on the negative things all the time. But I also think this is a, it's a professional game. The players know when they've made mistakes. You, I speak to them in the mix zone, and, and they come out and they know when they've made a mistake. Mm. But if you watch the, the highlights, you watch the, the games back, the, the commentators tend not to discuss it. They'll try to focus on the positive. So if a defender makes a mistake, they'll, they'll focus on what the striker did that was mm -hmm. good or something. And I think in order for the league as a whole to, to improve, not just the players, but but for fans too to understand what mm -hmm. what is yeah. good and what's bad, mm -hmm. I think it's important to sometimes say, okay, he made a mistake, he, he didn't do it on purpose, but but it happened. Okay. Definitely. Mm. Um, sure. When you're talking about mistakes, yeah, what kind of mistakes are we talking about? We're we talking about kind of like um, uh, insane kind of offside rule, offside um, positionings, or are we talking about own goals? Or what's the deal then? It's what it's all of that. It's you know, if a defender makes a bad pass, if they're in the mm -hmm. wrong position, like you said, it plays someone on side. If they if they do score an own goal, I mean, the J League don't announce the name of of the score, right? right. it just says own goal. Yeah. I don't think that happens anywhere else in the world. Like, mm. it's, you know, if it, maybe if it's kids football, if you're talking about an under eight team, you don't want the kid to go home feeling upset. But, sure. But these are 20, 30 year old players. If they score an own goal, it's okay to say who it was. Mm. That kind of thing. And yeah, you know, if a defender makes a mistake, if a striker misses a very good opportunity, anywhere else in the world, they're going to say like he really should have scored that. Mm. Maybe his positioning was wrong. Maybe he jumped too early. But here they kind of say, oh, that was unlucky, or oh, maybe the ball was a bit too quick, or mm. they kind of try to spin it positively. And I, oh, I, I do see thing. your point. Um, it's sometimes kind of like avoiding reality, you know, yeah. the, the yeah. commentating, you know. Um, I'm guilty with this, um, like I'm working um, uh, with the games too. Like you'd say something along the lines of like, you know, oh, it's not a bad effort, but, but, mm. but, 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 you know, you don't get many commentators um, or, um, analysts out here in the Japanese and TV scene who kind of properly say, what the hell is he up to? You yeah. know? Well, so that, that's more realistic, isn't it? Yeah. What's your say about this, Dan? Uh, it, it is, and it is not, not, nothing that you see anywhere in the world. Mm. Uh, so I think that that's sort of one easy thing that the league could do and start counting own goals. And you don't need a scoring chart for who scored the most own goals in the season, but you can at least recognize it because someone scored an own goal and uh, it's just part of the game. Uh, I think that commentary in the last couple of years has gotten a little better. Mm. I think that they are starting to look at bad plays, to look at controversial plays. It's coming up, it, it's improving. Uh, but I do think that the league could do better to embrace the controversy mm. uh, and to look at uh, play, plays where a player makes a mistake and say, you know, he, he screwed up. Mm. And I think that's part of the game. And I think that if you look at how foreign leagues embrace that controversy and create that narrative, it does create something that the fans are more invested in. Mm. I want to chime in here 
do you, any of you think that this is maybe something to do with the um, Japanese culture to keep harmony or to keep the unity, not call anyone out? <laughs> 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 what about you? Yes, yes, I do. I agree. I think so. So uh, yeah. what, what can we do to um, maybe improve that? Just get yeah, people to... I mean, I think this is something that afflicts Japanese sports media right across the board. I mean, I've been doing a lot of Olympic coverage mm. up here. Same thing. Even from the media, questions are tame, uh, controversies avoided. Mm -hmm. um, the fans are smart enough, they're mature enough, and they're ready for it, and they want to hear that kind of stuff. I mean, you look mm -hmm. at North America, entire shows are based on... Locker room talk. Yeah, and just on <laughs> controversy. Mm. Talk about it. That's what fans... It keeps you engaged with the league as well. So, I mean, there's a place for how it's done now, but there's also a place where serious analysis can be done, and with that comes controversy at times. Mm. You might have to say something bad about somebody. I do a program called J-Zone um, uh, with the Zone, right? And this is a program, um, I don't know if you guys know about this, but it basically dissects on the screen into four different screens, and it covers J1, J2, J3 and uh, simultaneously, and when the goals get in, you know, um, we focus on each of the screens, right? Mm. But um, we do this not just by myself, we have, we have uh, um, two specialist ex-football players. And I recently did this um, with a, a guy called Bando-san, you know, yeah. um, you, got, you guys know <laughs> yeah, Bando, totally. right? Very well, yeah. And he was so really flipping honest about everything, yeah. <laughs> you know, saying, what is this guy doing? And then we have Hara-san too. I mean, you guys know Hara-san uh -huh. too yeah. at the same time. Um, and I think um, the time has come for there to be a lot more honest, mm. um, kind of like in the face, maybe the right, um, uh, I don't, maybe it might be a, a different kind of term, not be the right term, but I, it just, there just seems to be this kind of distance between um, the real stuff that's going on mm. and the actual the reporting itself. Yeah. Right? But now, that, I think, mm. yeah, what you said there, that's kind of builds into the point I made about the press conferences. The press conferences here are, you know, obviously no one wants to ask a, a coach a controversial thing in front of everyone. You don't want conflict for mm. conflict's sake, which is often what happens in England now. Mm. People are looking for, for scandal where there isn't any. But sometimes there's a question that needs to be asked. Sometimes there's, some, there's rumours something's happening in the club or maybe something happened on the pitch and mm. you need to ask the coach. Yeah what's going on or what do you think about this? I was, uh, um, it wasn't J-League, it was a J-League team in the, the Asian Champions League final. Urawa Reds played Al Hilal of Saudi Arabia and the, the pre-match press conference was brilliant because it was the Saudi journalists asking the Urawa coach these questions. He was never posed <laughs> in J-League and they were asking him all this controversial stuff. Do you, would you rather win this competition or, or not get relegated? Right, in the right, league? right. <laughs> Are you guys trying to injure our best players? And you could see that the, the coach, zone. yeah, he was completely out of his comfort <laughs> zone. And, and once they're translated from Arabic into English into Japanese, uh -huh. you can see the coach and the player reacting like, what? what's happening here? <laughs> and I enjoyed that because you're then getting more interesting answers mm -hmm, from them mm -hmm. rather than their pre-prepared answers of, yeah. it's going to be a difficult game, we're going mm -hmm. to do our best, the fans are going to be here they're suddenly gone, hang on a minute, and they're thinking, and then they're giving you a different angle, mm -mm -mm -mm. which I think is important, because as we've said, the, the fans are mature enough, they want this kind of stuff. It's nothing personal, but this is the story, and you need that rather than just the kind of same old mm -hmm. recycled quotes. And I think that's important, and I think the J-League now is almost 30 years old. It's, it's ready now for that, mm. for that maturity, to have a little bit of conflict, a little mm. bit of controversy, and know that it's, like I said, it's nothing personal, but that's part of, of professional sport. Mm. So, Here's a song. Yes. What do you say then? Right. Mm. Um, well, <laughs> it's a tough. <laughs> yeah, you're, in a, tough you're in a tough position. <laughs> However, you know, um, I think this is this, we're not just talking about you know one, two, three, four, um, five, six um, people on the table. Mm -hmm. You know, there's quite a lot of people out there actually feeling like, the same sort of sentiment. Right. Yeah. I think uh, J League is now. Um, well, you, as you mentioned, that it's almost 30 years, and we're on the way to you know, becoming more professional as a league and the clubs becoming professional. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the Japanese culture does um, reflect the press conference. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but as a league, we are hoping to start you know, changing those kind of atmosphere that we have and to um, establish more environment where people can ask questions mm. and for players and coaches to um, answer in their you know comfort zone yeah. and answer it honestly yeah uh, and Pastacoglu has no time for fools uh, he <laughs> is great in a way because 
we will sometimes we'll give him more pointed questions and sometimes we'll lob softballs at him if we just want to see what he says mm -hmm. but he's always consistent and he's always honest mm -hmm. uh, you get you've had issues in the past with Brazilian managers who have been maybe a little too honest and put their interpreters <laughs> in a very difficult position <laughs> Uh, and everywhere sort of in between. Mm. Uh, you do notice that when a manager is speaking in English, what they say in English and what gets translated uh -huh. into Japanese yes, can yes, often yes, be yes, two yes. different mm. things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, um, a classic uh, occasion about Posaka Guru the other day was um, the final game, you know, uh, he was asked at half time um, what he was thinking about in you know, FC Tokyo. And he just came out and said, I don't care. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> and I love it. It's a typical plastic guru. It, it is. Yeah. It's great. And I think that I know that uh, new players, when they join the J League, they have like their rookie symposium, and they go through media training. Mm. I think that managers could stand to go through some oh. media training. I would say the opposite. I think they should stop having the training because then they just <laughs> come out. Yeah, That's come true. Out and they have the same. They're already set with their answers. And you can see you them you almost flicking through. I don't mm. expect every J League manager to become like a Jurgen Klopp type uh, <laughs> or a Mourinho, or Mourinho type. type. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it would be amazing. And it would make our job so much easier, but it would be nice to get some something more authentic, some more personality in their press conferences. And uh, to be fair, that does have to come from the media. And for the managers to give better answers, the media has to ask better questions. Mm -hmm. exactly maybe they right. can do some workshops with some foreign journalists and maybe like uh, adapt a little bit. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do yeah. think that part of the rookie symposium should be that they should have foreign journalists yeah. talking to the players because I think that a lot of the time we ask questions that are on a much sort of different track than what Japanese mm -hmm. journalists are asking. Uh, I think that if you're going to encourage journalists to ask better questions, you need to encourage them to uh, report in different ways, not mm. just articles, but I love to see more video reporting yeah. from J League, me from media covering the J League, and things like that. But right now, it's sort of so restrictive that what gets written it only shows up in a short newspaper article the next mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. And if we had more freedom to write about these things, then we could go in different directions. Mm -hmm. I'm loving the rawness of this conversation. Yes. <laughs> uh, are you surviving? I am. <laughs> Excellent. Yes. Yes. Letting out our and frustration. And I just took a note yeah. about that, doing the training for the yeah. um, international media as well. Yeah, it'll be yeah, just um, good. Um, just to at least take it into account yeah. and for the club representatives to understand that we have this kind of situation mm -hmm. and that they need to kind of compare it with um, abroad too. Mm -hmm. you know. Excellent. So, yeah, I'm going to moderate this a little yeah. bit. Um, let's, uh, we've, we've gotten pretty heated into this discussion, but I want to move on to hear what Stuart wants to say. Um, let's, Good stuff. What, do you, what have you prepared for us? Okay. So, even more controversial topic. Uh -oh. Too much foreign hero worship. Ooh. So, what does everybody think about this then? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, 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 I wasn't expecting such a, a unanimous agreement. Yeah. Okay. So I, I may be coming from this from a slightly different uh, point of view, but um, uh, when, I, when I go to watch a, a football match, what really excites me is watching the players that have come up through the club and, uh, and made it all the way up to the top team. And mm. uh, that means, you know, going to not only the league matches, but uh, going to the Nabisco Cup in the play, um, uh, initial round, group, group stages, and, uh, you know, watching the, the, the youth players play, play there for the, for the first time. And I've seen, like now, it, for me, having gone through one season where I've seen players come up, uh, from the youth team, playing those matches, and now playing in the national team. That's fantastic. That really, you know, makes me makes me proud. And uh, and you know, it's a very long it's a very long term uh, uh, view. Mm. But um, uh, while I really respect the the foreign, the foreign players, I also worry for them because um, coming to Japan at the very end of your career, um, the the temperature in the summer is is a big factor. Mm. The um, the, actually, it's a, probably a much better uh, league than they expect if they, if they haven't watched uh, J-League. It's quite tough to, to, to come in. And, mm. uh, 
uh, you might not get on to be selected as a as a first uh, a team member every week, and especially if you get injured, mm. then it's a little bit disappointing for the fans who might have come there. But um, having said that, you know it does bring the the fans to the stadium and the like kind of the I would say the tourist fans who are coming to see one one match, and if they get if they get involved and uh, enjoy coming watching in the in the stadium, that that's very great. But I like seeing the the. Um, the, the foreign heroes uh, like uh, Iniesta and yep. uh, and uh, Torres, but um, I like watching them in the other team. <laughs> <laughs> so. You guys all agree um, with this oh, point. It's kind of on the fence. Mm. Um, okay, good for it then. Well, I would say 10, 15 years ago, for mm. sure. Um, you even saw it on a national team at the 98 World Cup, 2002. Mm. You see the players' jaws drop a little bit when they step out on the pitch and they're looking across the other side and they're seeing guys whose posters they probably still have hanging right, on the wall yeah. in their bedrooms. But I think as the t national team has gotten better, as the level of play in the J League has gotten better, there's almost a certain confidence mm. now in the Japanese players. And I don't think that type of hero worship exists as much as it did before. Because I think they now feel, I can play with that guy. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, and that some, some have yeah. gone over to Europe and have shown that they can play. So I think there is a bit of that still. Uh, especially with the younger players, mm. but I think Japanese football in general has has a certain confidence level now it didn't have before. Mm. They now feel that yes, I can step on the pitch with these mm. guys, and I'm ready to take them on. Um, and I think you see that in the J League as well. I think some of these foreigners come over now. The Japanese are going, "Well, I'm better than you. I'm going to take yeah. your spot just because <laughs> you're coming in." Um, and we're seeing that happen. So, whereas, like I said, I was on the fence a little bit. Mm. I, I do agree that that still exists and needs to be flushed out, but over time, as the skill level has gotten better, confidence level has gotten better, I think it's not as bad as it was mm. 10, 12, 15 years ago. So definitely a significant, a significant um, level of improvement um, with this topic and, and concerned, right? No, yeah, and I think the league can you know, pat themselves on the back a little bit mm. for doing that because they're, they're giving the, the venue for those players to, to prove themselves. I'm all happy to bring in these foreign players because, you know, let these guys have to fight for a spot yeah, against the foreign um, player. I think the level of competition has gone up quite considerably also with the, with the window being open for the, the, the amount of players or the amount of foreign players that can get into uh, one team. Um, we were talking about that latest with the whole Asian kind of uh, uh, spot too. Um, Dan, what do you reckon? Then? Yeah. Well, it's interesting that you point out the um, number of foreign, that now there is no restriction on the number of foreign players mm. who can come into the league. And Marinos' uh, final, uh, their starting lineup for the last round of the season had six foreign players. And I think that's probably, I mean, it's amazing to see that team composed of, of so many international players. Mm. And I think that if done correctly with proper scouting and a manager with a vision and a locker room that's in sync, it can benefit a club. Uh, but as Stuart pointed out, what you didn't see in Marinos is a huge star like Iniesta or Torres. Right. Yeah, of course. I mean, at the end of the season, uh, what was the success? What was the definition of success? And, and was it actually success or not? Um, do you have any words, um, Sean? So yeah, um, no, it's an incredibly difficult topic to, to unpick. I, I agree that they, these players coming in, they do serve a good purpose. It's, it's drawing attention, as Dan just said, with the way fans go into the game. I'm not sure if three, four years ago, if Vissel Kobe is away, you know, the, the, if you think about it, the home team that they're mm. coming to play against, would the fans be that interested, especially maybe not. So it's bringing new people to the stadium What's important is keeping them there. If they're just coming to watch Iniesta one week and then they're going to go to see a, a pop concert the next week or they're going to pop concert. How old did I sound then? <laughs> <laughs> what are they called now? A gig? Is it a gig? A gig. A Whatever. Gig, one of, one of those well, things. A pop concert a is show. Pop you kind of translate of Japanese yeah, into English. I did that. that. That's my excuse. It's yeah. not. I think th this is kind of blows the argument kind of like um, into a different uh, levels. But um, when we all talk about improvements at the J League, uh, uh, needs to um, kind of experience. Um, just going back to 1993, when I was a little kid, um, and I actually went to uh, Mitsuzawa a, a couple of times, taken by my dad because he was driving a Nissan Cedric, you know, um, and just <laughs> a bit random. But like, um, 
looking at the improvements of the national side and the J League itself, it has been an incredible improvement, especially lately with the media, with the zone coming in and being able to just check like games, you know, every single day, whatever game that you want, even up to an J three stanzas. It's 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 good, um, but it's kind of do we take it for granted that you know um, lots of people coming into the games it, it, this is fantastic but on the other end we have something like this um, with the foreign players maybe being celebrated too much here I mean how, how do we balance it out then how, how do we kind of like take it in and what what can we be um, happy about and what can we be like we need to change this desperately about you know this is something that I've kind of been thinking about as we as I've been thinking, um, talking to you guys yeah, yeah. I think uh, Speaking of sort of ways that you can celebrate the accomplishments, mm. I think that somewhere like the J League Awards would be a better venue for that. Mm. Uh, I think that it does seem in this year, obviously, they couldn't hold the awards at Yokohama Arena, and so it was a much smaller venue. Um, not really much inclusion of the J2 and J3. Right, right. Uh, yeah. Especially as it came on the last day of the J3 season. Mm. And I think that you could have a nice send off ceremony for David Villa at the awards. You can recognize players who are retiring, which the league does sort of to an extent in their sort of Hall of Fame esque. You know, mm -hmm. ceremony, like they, they recognize the players like Seigo Narazaki and uh, Yuji Nakazawa who have yeah, yeah, yeah. Gi given their entire careers to mm. the J-League. So I, I think there are ways in which you can recognize that and I think that the J-League can sort of treat itself with not quite a little more respect but the idea that we should be grateful that these foreign players are coming to the J-League, it's sort of underselling how good the league is. Mm. It's, not 19, it's not 1993 or 94, right. and we're not really desperate for foreigners to come over. Mm. And I think that it is, we should celebrate the fact that the league has improved to the point where Iniesta wants to play here, mm. where Torres wants to play here, and we should find a way to celebrate that instead of focusing on one player who was here for one season.